Napoli fans around the world, welcome to Napoli Talk. A disappointing loss for Napoli, not just the heavy scoreline 3 0 at home against Atalanta, but also the way that Napoli played, a lack of intensity, and tactically, Gasperini got the better of Conte. Guys, apologies I didn't come live after the game for you. Was it because Napoli lost? Absolutely not. Otherwise, I wouldn't have made any videos last year. It was because I was out in the mountains over the weekend enjoying a little bit of fresh air, getting away from the city, but I did manage to catch the Napoli game. So I do have my views on what I saw. Look, guys, Napoli got outplayed by, by Atalanta and Atalanta's decision to not play a center forward absolutely threw Napoli off because it rendered Buongiorno, our best player possibly of the entire season so far, a little bit useless, right? If they had played Retegi at the very start, you would have had Buongiorno up against their front man and that would have been a battle that Buongiorno would have won and all the attacks would have concentrated towards Retegi and Buongiorno would have been able to deal with it. But Gasperini knew not to play to Napoli's strength. Instead, his front two were Lukman and De Ketelar. Lukman all the way down the left up against Di Lorenzo and De Ketelar playing as a second striker slash drifting a little bit on the right. Now, what did that mean for Napoli, it meant that Buongiorno, as we mentioned, was left a little bit useless. So one of our biggest strengths, we couldn't use it. And it meant also that Di Lorenzo had to stay back in his right back position all game in case Atalanta put bodies forward and put the ball towards Lukman. We know how much Di Lorenzo is useful for us going forward. Not only has he contributed with a lot of goals this season, but he's also just an extra man that knows how to play his passes. He knows how to triangulate with players, creates movement, and we just couldn't use him going forward. So we lacked a lot of, a, a, a lot of creativity up top and fluidity, which Di Lorenzo does bring from defensive position because he had to stay all the way back and right back now throughout this season he hasn't gone up against tough opposition I mean Leao for example against Milan only came on in the last 20 minutes and we had Mazzocchi come on to deal with him Lukman was really Di Lorenzo's first big test of the year ever since he got absolutely cooked in the Euros against Nico Williams and we know how much Di Lorenzo suffers against these type of players. And look, Lukman is, you know, in the top 30 of the Ballon d'Or. He contributed significantly to Atalanta's Europa League win with that incredible hat-trick. So we know how good Lukman is. And Di Lorenzo was struggling to deal with that because if you get too close to Lukman, he's going to turn on you, dribble past you. But Di Lorenzo stayed a little bit too far back. And it allowed Lukman to take on Di Lorenzo and, and Meret with long range shots because he had the space to do that. Um, so how do you defend against Lukman? Well, you cannot give him too much space, but also you cannot get too close. You have to find that balance and you really need, I think, someone else to help you. And I don't think Rachmani did enough to help Di Lorenzo. You can watch it back in the 2-0 goal. Rachmani was a little bit slow to close Lukman down because Di Lorenzo had him covered if he drifted left and Rachmani should have covered him if he cut across inside and he was a little bit slow. Buongiorno instead had to deal with, with De Ketela who dropped deep and to the right and that left Rachmani a little bit exposed maybe by the center himself and that's why he was maybe a little bit late to get to Lukman because he didn't want to commit to Lukman because De Lorenzo was already there and leave a hole in defense. So overall, guys, Atalanta just got everything right, you know. And I worry that other teams that have similar sort of players in their squads could do something similar to Napoli. It's not that we played bad, it's just that it exposed us in the sense that 
it took away some of our strong points. They isolated Di Lorenzo at right back and they made Buongiorno useless in defense. And, you know, congrats to Atalanta, guys. I mean, they are a team that has been building up to this. They won the Europa League last year against Bayer Leverkusen. They knocked out Liverpool. Guys, they had a Europa League run that I think was harder than a lot of Champions League teams last year, getting to the final stages. I mean, they had to go through some incredible teams. I think Bayer Leverkusen, for example, was the best team in Europe last season and Atalanta demolished them. So they are definitely a team to watch out for. They are well-structured. They have done everything right, not just this year and last year, but over the past few years with their stadium and everything. And Gasperini, guys, he, he's a tough cookie to, to beat. Sometimes we've managed to do that with, I mean, even with Mazzarri, uh, with Spalletti, but other times they've inflicted a lot of pain to us. Um, so this is always a difficult match for us. And uh, look, it's, it's part of the process. Napoli is still first and still will be first at the end of this round, even with Inter um, having to play. And we knew that this was going to happen, right? We knew that we needed to get those points against those smaller teams because we would face teams at the top that maybe had a little bit more than us at this moment in time, Atalanta and Inter. Even if we lose against Inter, for example, it still is enough to keep us in the hunt for the championship and definitely within the Champions League spots, even though you have teams like Fiorentina as well that are doing well, Lazio as well. So it's going to be difficult, but Napoli is within these teams. And I think as long as we can beat the mid and lower table teams, even if we struggle a little bit against the top five or so, I think that will still allow us to be in the mix and it's not like it's a complete disaster against the big teams this is our first loss we won against milan we tied against juventus away from home so it's not like this team is not able to rise up to the challenge of big games it's just that atalanta are in such a good spot at the moment they're so far forward in their progress but as conte said post-match guys that doesn't mean that by the end of the season atalanta will still be ahead of us if you think how much this Napoli team has improved under Conte in just three months compared to where we were at the end of last season, then imagine where we can be in three months down the line, potentially with a few new players coming in in December, who knows? So guys, keep the faith. I think we maybe got a little bit carried away or I maybe got a little bit too carried away after Milan. And the same way that maybe we should have toned it down after Milan, then we also cannot get too depressed here against Atalanta. And even if things don't go well against Inter next week, I think as long as we stay within one or two games of distance with these guys come March, then I think we can really you know, do something special because Conte finds a way in this team, I think, has... A lot of potential still to grow and this is all part of the learning we we can learn from this Conte can learn from this I'm sure he will study why Atalanta hurt us so bad anyways guys I hope that you still managed to enjoy your Sunday and as always smash that like button subscribe if you haven't think about becoming a member if you're not yet a member to help me grow the channel and as always forza napoli sempre ciao